Hi, Steve here. I'm going to go into the Word of God and totally shatter the false teaching of the rapture as it's been taught for the last 175 plus years. There may be several other people who've already taught on this, but it's my goal to show you clearly in the Word of God when the church will be taken out of this earth. I'm not going to try to convince you, but I'm going to teach you what the Word of God says. And it will prove to you that this false teaching of the rapture before the tribulation starts is a complete fabrication. I've had people say to me, it doesn't really matter as long as you believe in the Lord Jesus. Well, you're wrong. It does matter. Because many people will stop trusting the Lord when they see things happening that they were taught they would never see before the Lord returned for them. And this is why Jesus said in Matthew 24, 13, that whoever holds out to the end will be saved. He who endures to the end shall be saved. We'll go over the scriptures that have been taken out of context to support the false teachings of pre-tribulation rapture. I'll be using two versions of the scriptures. I'm using the complete Jewish Bible and the New King James Bible versions. I've had many people tell me, the King James Version is the only inerrant translation of the scriptures. I realize they say that out of ignorance because if they do their research on the complete Jewish Bible, they'd realize that it's even more accurate or it's just easier to understand than the King James Version. But I'm not going to take time to convince anyone of that now. Please research that on your own time. I feel this teaching is very critical as we get ready to start the book of Revelation. And when you understand all of this, Revelation will make more sense to you as we get deeper into it. Everything in the Bible must be taken in context. Who is speaking? Who is the writer writing to? What is the subject they're talking about? If you can't answer these questions when reading the Bible, you'll misapply so many verses and you'll be confused over and over again. So let's start by looking at chapter 24 in the book of Matthew. Jesus and his disciples just left the temple area and now they went to the Mount of Olives. When the disciples asked him these very interesting questions. When we read this, we have to remember that Jesus knew his disciples would not see all these things, but we who have a copy of the scriptures would be reading them and those Jews who would be living during the last days would understand then. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the Talmudim, or disciples, came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that you're coming and that the end of the age is here? Jesus replied, watch out. Don't let anyone fool you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, the Christ, and they will lead many astray. You will hear of the noise of wars nearby and the news of wars far off. See to it that you don't become frightened. Such things must happen, but the end is yet to come. For peoples will fight each other, nations will fight each other, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various parts of the world. All this is but the beginning of birth pains. Why did Jesus use this example? Because when a woman has birth pains, she knows that the deliverance of that pregnancy is coming very soon. She knows the end of her suffering and extreme pain will end soon. Verse 9, at that time, you will be arrested and handed over to be punished and put to death, and all peoples will hate you because of me. Notice it says, all nations, all people. We have Christian persecution now, but Jesus is saying the time is coming when everyone on earth will hate believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. At that time, many will be trapped into betraying and hating each other. Think about that for a minute. Jesus says many will be trapped into betraying and hating each other. I believe this is because the world will be convinced that it's the believers in Jesus Christ that won't fit in and conform to their way of thinking and acting. Many false prophets will appear and fool many people. And many people's love will grow cold because of increased distance from Torah. That just means that this world and this world system will separate itself so much from God's instructions and teachings that Christians will stand out like a sore thumb and be hated. But whoever holds out till the end will be delivered. And this good news about the kingdom will be announced throughout the whole world as a witness to all the Gentiles. It is then that the end will come. Notice here Jesus said the good news about the kingdom. 
This is what will be preached in the last days. Not the gospel, but the good news or the gospel about the kingdom. This is what the Jewish people were looking for. And they're still looking for God to establish and set up his kingdom as the ruling authority over all the earth. Since Jesus rose from the dead, the gospel has been preached to the Gentiles, but it's the gospel of the kingdom that will be preached in those days to the nation of Israel and to the world. His disciples knew exactly what he was talking about. So when you see the abomination that causes devastation spoken about through the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand the illusion, or whoever reads, let him understand what it means. This was added in the scriptures so that the people living when these things were happening would understand what Jesus meant. That will be the time for those in Judea to escape to the hills. Then in verses 17 through 30, Jesus warns them about the many ways that the devil will try and deceive them during these times. Then in verse 31, he tells them this, He will send out his angels with a great shofar or trumpet, and they will gather together his chosen people from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So who are his chosen? Ephesians 2 tells us very clearly who the chosen are. Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity or the hostility, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one Spirit to the Father. He is the new covenant. This is the New Testament that God established through his only Son, Yeshua, Jesus. So who are the chosen ones? The chosen ones are those from both Jews and Gentiles who are believers in the finished work Jesus accomplished on the cross by suffering, dying, and rising from the dead. Those are the chosen ones, those who have put all their faith and trust in his finished work to save them. In the next video, we'll talk about the other scriptures that have been taken out of context and misapplied concerning the rapture. Until then, look over the scriptures yourself and think about it. Hi, Steve again. I just want to mention about the censorship that's going on. I want to talk to you a little bit about the fact that it's ramping up. More and more people, not just conservatives, but they're targeting Christians. It's mainly Christians and conservatives because it just happens that most conservatives are Christians. But just because you're a conservative doesn't make you a Christian either. But the point is this, the censorship is reaching a level. It's going up and up and up, and every day it's going more and more and more. We can see it. More people are being removed from YouTube. It's going to continue. And depending on what happens, whether there's any real pushback to this against the social media companies, that will determine just how fast this ramps up. So I'm saying all this to tell you that I do expect, I'm not fearful, I'm not worried, I don't lay awake at night worrying about it, but I'm just gonna tell you, between you and I, the day will come when they will remove me off YouTube. Where will you find my videos? I wanna remind you again, I am posting all my videos that I post on YouTube on my new channel at brighteon.com. It's brighteon.com forward slash channel forward slash think about it. I want you to know that you'll always be able to find me there. Until the internet's gone, I still will be on my websites at thinkaboutit.news, thinkaboutit.online. And I will always link my videos at the top of the website over to Brighteon. I don't link anything to YouTube anymore because 
I anticipate what's coming. I want to say this again about those who support me. I really appreciate you. And thank you for those of you who said we're praying for you. Thank you so much. I want to tell you I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. I love you guys and I really appreciate you. I also want to say this to those of you who say, you know, I really, I've been watching your videos a long time and I really wish I could support you, but I just can't do it. Don't worry about it. Please don't feel condemned. Don't worry about it. Don't feel, have a guilty conscience about it. I don't care. If you can't, don't worry about it. Pass the videos on to those who you think would benefit from watching them. Just get the links out. That's the one thing you can do. And I appreciate you doing that. And as God gives me strength, I will continue to push on and get the truth out. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting. Think about it. God bless.